now it's going to make those two clubs that are going to be part of the system. Okay, so this stuff is found nowhere in your textbook. There's lots of stuff online that goes back to the box. Um, not found anywhere in your textbook, so the handout, the assignment is the next page after the email. So that's the assignment for this. Did you find one that's sharp? Okay, so tell me about pi. Tell me about pi. What do you know about pi? <laughs> Okay, there's no repetition in the digits of five. It never repeats and it never ends. What do we call that? Irrational number. Okay, that's an irrational number. And the reason why we give it a symbol is because it never ends. We give it a symbol because there's no pattern to it, we can't say repeating. Decimals. We give it a symbol because it's too big of a number to write down on a page. So we've already asked you question what is the numerical value of pi? What is the function? Okay. So 3.14 and it goes on forever and ever. Doesn't repeat, doesn't end. So we give it a symbol. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then we give it a symbol. You don't know what pi is? <laughs> so anything that's a perfect, anything that's a perfect circle, so anything that's a perfect circle, if you take the circumference, you get another circumference. If you don't find your right circumference, so if you have, if you take the circumference of a circle and divide it by its diameter will always get the same answer. And it will be 3.1 or 1.9, something like If it's not a true circle, you won't get that. The closest, the closest ratio to it is 22 over 7. Uh, that would be July 22nd. I call that approximate Pi Day if you want to celebrate Pi Day in Canada. July 22nd is probably Pi Day. Absolutely, please. Absolutely. Send me an email. Send me a bonus card. So, <laughs> it's an approximate time. So, what are the funds? Okay, this has nothing to do with natural box, but the thing you need to know is we have another one of these five things, these irrational numbers that don't repeat, don't end, um, and it's E. It's what? Tau? Tau? We call it, um, it looks like Euler, but it's pronounced Euler. So Leonard Euler was the guy who discovered this number, this ratio. Those people who spend their time measuring circumferences and dividing it by a diameter, they didn't have social media. They didn't they have a little bit extra time on their hands. They did other things. <laughs> okay, so you need to know E is 2.71. You need to know that. No. 2.71. No. Don't round it. Don't round it. So you need to know that E is 2.71. Can you handle that? You're going to commit that to memory. You know that 5 is 3.14. You need to know that E is 2.71. Again, great idea for a test here. So we're going to do natural logs. And in your calculator, you're going to see a natural log button. Okay, so your log button on your calculator, go one down a bit, and you see LS. 
L N. What's the base on the log? Like if I put that in the If I put a log in my calculator, it would be a base 10, right? Yes? If I put a natural log in my calculator, the LN, um, I'm assuming it's like logarithm at 3 or something like that, some Latin word. Um, if I put LN in it, it's got a base of E. So natural log have bases of E. Now E is somewhere on your calculator. It's right above it. So second function is the easiest one to test. Oh, right under the five by nine. So I think that's just an alpha. I don't think it's the value. I know it's the letter E, so I think it's the letter E. I don't think it's the letter E. Yeah. Okay, so that one works. The letter E there. This is E to the exponent. E to the exponent, whatever. If you're going to put a natural log in an exponential form. So, natural logs have a base of E. They're not stated, it's known. Pretty straightforward. So, if we want to find the value of E to the exponent 3.2, there's one, we go to the second function, use the natural log button, 3.2. Would I use 2.71 and then the exponent 3.2? Because you'd be rounding. When you can, like you, I think when we were little, you didn't understand what pi was when you were 3.14. Uh, you probably type that into your calculator. Now, as you mature your mathematical ability, you're using the pi by the joint and then you can use the to be captured into 10. Same thing with E. Uh, so that's 24.52. I'm glad things don't change in my class. Like, I'm glad that nothing works. You know, you could probably find the equation. That's probably the straightest line that's happening in this class. Um, can someone do the natural law of this? What is it? Make it five point. Give me two decimal places. Two decimal. Give it to eight. Or you have to round it. If I'm asking for two decimal places, you round. Come on, girl. Come on. Okay. Okay. Hold on. I appreciate that you guys have come to my class. I appreciate even more that some of you want to actually wear this. What I don't appreciate is I can't hear in the class. So, what's the question about the? I think you could. You could round it off to 2.72 if you want. I'm just saying, like, quoting all those numbers, I just need you to know the first. I'm not like I'm not asking you to go beyond that. Okay. I'm not asking you to memorize the kind of the right thing. Yeah, hang on, hang on, early. 24.53? Okay. All right. So we talked about this already. If you're using natural logs, um, instead of using log to solve an exponential equation, and you don't have a distinct base, you can natural log them. Um, you'll get the same answer either way. So, same rules apply. Any log rules that we've done apply to natural logs. This is just a different base. That's it. It's a special base. That's it. So, we we have ln base e to the argument e. What's that equal to? Any time a base and an argument are the same? Okay, now if you did this in your calculator, but you can't do log base e, e, that's also going to give you a value of one. Okay? All right. So let's graph 
We're going to graph this graph right here. Can you do that? Please tell me you can. <laughs> yes, no. Perfect. Let's put it into exponential form so we can see it better. What's the base? And what's my exponent? Y. What is my argument? X. Okay, so which numbers am I going to make up? I'm going to make the Y one. So negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Which ones do I make up when I'm doing this exponential function to make up with them? Excellent. Okay. So, if I do these, this is going to be 1 over 100, 1 over 10, 1, 10, and 100. That's nice and easy, right? Uh, all right, well, we're okay today. The good thing is you live in blocks. Okay, let's go down to here. This one we already talked about. That's true because why? It's a base of the argument B, so we know it's one. Right? We know that that's the truth. We talked about that one. This one showed up on a provincial exam. Okay, so let's look at this. What do I do when I'm trying to solve for an exponent and all I all I have are exponents? What am I gonna do? Solve both sides. So I'm going to have a log e to the exponent L n. We're just gonna simplify this side, see if it gets to where it needs. What do I do here? Oh, I have to log this side, sorry. Crazy. Oh my, oh my. You were voted off the island. You were voted off the island. We gotta take this move out to the front. L and X log argument E is equal to. What do we do now? <laughs> so should I have used the regular log? Why would I use natural logs instead? Because then I could use log laws, but I also could use this truth as well, right? So maybe I don't log them, I natural log them. Okay, so then we've got L and X times L and E equals L and X. Okay, what do we know about this? What's that equal to? One. If I were to put these into exponential form, what would be the base on them? E. So these would change to E to the exponent Ln x equals Make sense? No? Clear as mud? No bad? We just kind of work our way back. Perfect. What about this one? You don't. What about this one? Put it in power form. Nope. Move that out. So it's x equals L and E equals x. What's that equal to? Got it? Okay. 
So those kinds of nipple screws that you might want to get tattooed on your arm. What do we got next? Okay, if the arguments are divided, what do we know happens? Where they subtract, the numerators are actually multiplied together, so those are going to be added. So I'm going to have ln x squared plus ln y cubed subtract ln z to the exponent 4. Am I done? No, what do I need to do? Move it to the <laughs> Thank you for noticing that. Some days as a teacher, I feel like I've failed when you're talking about both sides of an expression. <laughs> Could I go any further than that? Could I combine anything? No. Although their bases are all the same, their arguments are all different. It's not going to combine. So that's where we leave it. Both sides equal to each other. Okay, so what do we do for the next one? I'm trying to solve for the exponent. What do we do for next? Log both sides, but what kind of log? Natural log. So I'm going to have L N E x equals ln 2x plus 1. So bring the exponents to the front. You're right. Why did I put that in brackets? Because it's one exponent, but the ln is applied to both the x and the one. So you need to get into a habit of putting the brackets there. So as Carson mentioned, the ln e has a known value of 1. So I get x on this side equals x times ln 2 plus ln 2. So I just look backwards to screw this. What now? What now? What now? There's an equal sign. There's an equal sign, so I have to solve for something. I move all the x's to the left hand side. So I've got x minus x ln2 equals ln2. What do I do now? Not yet. I gotta pull something out. Okay, I'm going to common factor with an x. I knew that. Now what do I do? I want to get x by itself, so what do I need to get rid of? That. So I'm going to divide by that. So if I put that into my calculator, it's going to be ln2, close bracket, divided by, open bracket, 1 minus ln2, close bracket, close bracket. So that whole denominator has to be assessed first. And let's round to four decimal places. Two points. Five eight what? Five eight eight or five eight nine? Five eight nine. You guys have to be able to solve logs. It looks complicated, but it's not if you practice. I know this is going to be a hard stretch for almost Sunday. We got two weeks in June, but you really can't stop doing your work now. Like if you go through that review, it's quite a bit of logarithms on it. <laughs> they show up everywhere. Okay. So this one gets a little bit complicated to solve, but it's not. It goes back to that middle truth that we didn't really understand. If you use e to the exponent ln, 
All you need to do there is bring what's left of the exponent down. So this. So this was the. Mm, sorry. This was the e l n x equals f. So really, what it's saying is all you have to do is bring that exponent down, and you're good to go. So now we just solve it. Two uh, x equals four. X equals two. not that hard, but incredibly hard to solve if you didn't remember this. Okay, I'm gonna hit pause, and I'd like you guys to solve this one. And be a little bit more complicated, but I'd like you to try. What's my base? E to the exponent. One. So what am I going to do here? Just, you know, just you do stuff. So I'm going to multiply, I'm going to get rid of that denominator, so I'm going to multiply both sides by x. So remember e is just is not a variable uh, symbol for a number, so I'm going to have e x equals x plus 1. So what is this really saying? This is like saying 2.72 x equals x plus 1. What do you do? Not yet. Not yet. Go back to 39. Get all your variables to one side. Right? So we're going to have 2.72x minus x equals 1. Almost there. So we're going to have 1.72x equals 1. Okay. So I have a problem with what I just did for the math. Anybody want to tell me what my problem is? What's the number of this one? So if I had 3x minus x, what would that give me? 2x. 2x, right. Okay, so what's my problem with my math here? Anybody want to tell me? Because I'm losing a half mark for sure. I rounded too early. Because I changed e through to 2.72. So if you avoid that, this is how I would do it. So I would have ex minus x equals 1. What can I call the factor in this? And if you use that in your calculator, you're going to get the right answer. Middle is actually what it's supposed to be if I did this in my calculator, but I'm not a calculator, so let's try it. So 1 divided by 1.72, 5.1. So pretty darn close, but I would use, if I did it this way, If I did it this way, I'd lose a half mark for rounding. It's not the end of the world. I'd rather see you lose a half mark for rounding as opposed to getting nothing. So if you guys were to pull out your exam that you write down, I know that's the first thing you want to do. So if you guys could pull that out for two seconds. Yep. Which is where? This? Yeah. That's long long. That's uh, chapter 8.3. If they're subtracted and they have the same basis, we know that the arguments can just be divided. That's for me. 
Oh, I sent it home in your city. Either K or a T, right? 
we're not going to solve for something nice and easy like a P. That's not going to be our world. It would be nice if it was. Okay, so small town population was 1,200. In 2000, the population was 2,000. We have 200 of the population in the year of 2050. So the first thing we do is this is a two step problem. This is step one. We have to find K first. We know the time, that's easy. We know what that is, but we need to solve for K first. K would be the rate that the population is increasing by. So T would be my time, and K would be my rate. So we have to find the rate first. So we're going to take what we know. The data that we know here, it was this, and here it was that. We're going to take that data that we know. So we're going to fill that in. So we know that P is P my starting population or my ending population. Ending. Usually your initials inside. Okay? So P is going to be 2000. What's my initial population? 1,200. What's my T? How much time has passed between 1960 and the year 2000? 40 years. So I'm going to have 2,000 is equal to 1,200 times E to the exponent k, or I guess I can put 40k. First thing I'm going to do is I want to isolate that power. Isolate the power. So this thing is the power. How do I get rid of that 1200? Divide it out. going to end up with some sort of funky repeating desk. So let's leave it as a fraction for now. Because those zeros can cancel each other. 20 over 12. What can I take out of those? 20 over 12, I can take out 4. So it's going to leave me with 5 over 2. A 2 twice? Okay. Yeah, so if you get half it and then half it again. Not a bad strategy. Okay, so what am I going to do here? I'm solving for an exponent, and there's no logs anywhere. We're going to natural log both sides. Oh. Matthew, I was waiting for you. I'm going to do this in all one step. Are you guys okay with that? Right, because it would be L and E exponent 40k. And then using the power law, you move that forward. Okay, you don't have to put that if you don't, if you can, if it makes more sense. Can I do this in my calculator? Yes, we have a natural law of time. This would have been a calculator, but there's no way to do it. What's L and E equal to? One. Could I add them to my calculator? You totally could. You could do it in your head. Why? Why bother? Um, so if I do, so this would be L and a five third equals forty k. So I'm going to divide by forty. Divide by forty. I wouldn't. Long, long or not so long anything, that would be where I would do it. And so, okay, you have to use all your numbers. Every single one of them, because K is not what we're looking for. K is not the answer to this question. That's the question. Oh, Determine the population in the year 2050. Okay? So this one looks like to be 0 0.01277064090. Okay, Skelly, do you expect us to use all those decimal places? I do. True. All right. So now that you 
have this, you can easily solve the answer to this question. Do we know what P is? No, P is my ethnic population. It says, what is the population in the year 2050? I don't know what it is. That's what I'm solving for. So P is equal to, what's my initial population? So, there's a debate, 1,200 or 2,000. Yes. So I think for me, I would probably use 2,000 because it's a nice thing to be. My P is going to be 50. If you use 1,200, what would your T be? Nice. Does that make sense to everybody? Your T would change based on the initial population that you use. So we're going to use the 2,000 one. If you use 1,200, you would not be wrong, but your T would change. So that is just putting it into your cal into your calculator. That's really simple. I'm going to do this first in my calculator, and then I'm going to times that answer by 2,000. And I'm going to get the population is equal to uh, 3,787.39. Can I leave it like that? How come? You cannot have a decimal in a person. So my population is going to be what? Some of you would argue that it's going to be 3,787.39 would be correct. But it, then there are other people who would argue that it's a person. It might be just their number, but it's still a person. So we're going to count it as a person. Chopped off. I mean, it's still a person. So it's, it's an ethics question at this point. Uh, I would accept all answers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of cute right. I love that. Okay, we have three minutes left. I don't think I'm going to get through these, but I will tell you the answer from the back. So y is equal to four three nine zero four nine grams, and the t, the half life of the substance, so the t is equal to three point four six five seven five seven years. Super easy. Okay, so do we have something with an exponential form that we can try exploring? What do you do? Matthew? Log both sides. If you have to log and constant, what are you going to do? Sorry. Put it into exponential form. So you see, this is what Kevin is trying to tell you guys, and I will use the process. Remember, we were talking about it last week. So, how you can use your calculator when you don't have a base to test. Okay? The easiest thing to do, so if you have a base 2, you take log of the argument. You take log of the argument divided by log of the base. So you can use this calculator to solve it. So you can use your calculator to solve it. So if we were to do this one, how would we write it? Log 2. Right, so now we see it from both ways and and we can actually just use our calculator to solve it. That's the, that's how it is, the way to go. So you can use your calculators for this, but you need to not rely on it. Because really, you're not going to have your calculator top when you have this procedure. And there is a no calculator part in your calculator. Because the majority of your logs, you're going to find them in your non-calculator course. 